So how can you be Israel United in Christ cursed? And so, you know, they have a convoluted way that they try to deal with this and all this, but you've never seen a group of people besides Hebrews like who work so hard and try so hard to claim to be cursed. Question number seven. This was, uh, to me, this is like the, this is the knockout punch. <laughs> um, this, this debts everything. It says, how is it possible to be cursed under the law when Galatians 3 says all those who are in Christ have been freed from the curse of the law um and you'll see that it says for all who rely on works of the law are under a curse this starts in verse 10 um for it is written curse be everyone who does not abide by all things written in the book of the law and do them verse 11 now it is evident that no one is justified before god by the law no one right for the righteous shall live by what faith verse 12 but the law is not of faith rather the one who does them shall live by them christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us for it is written cursed is everyone who is hanged on a tree so that in christ jesus the blessings of abraham might come to the gentiles so that we might receive the promised spirit through faith um why is this uh question uh something that would break down the whole theology of the curses that are supposedly evident of black people in the transatlantic slave trade all right so i want to respond to vocab malone's convoluted stupid argument all right this video is going to be entitled vocab malone the curses and the curse of the law the curses of deuteronomy and the curses of the and the curse of the law have nothing to do with each other all praise to yahweh by hashem yahweh shai and double honor to the apostles and elders of great millstone okay and again the video will be entitled vocab malone the curse of the law and the curses of deuteronomy have nothing to do with each other okay it's not even the same thing that's being even spoken of the curse of the law that he's talking about in Galatians 3, as you see it on the comment on the um, screen right now, right? The curse of the law, what is that? That's when the Savior died on the cross, we no longer had to, to, had to die for breaking the commandments. That's really all it's, all it's going into. The curse of the law. That has nothing to do with, with whether the Israelites would be under the curses of Deuteronomy or not. And we're going to show you that. In the scriptures now first i want to show you here this video that you saw in the opening the clip from it this is from uh you saw the bald head jake critical question for black which are not black and they know that but they want to call us that anyway a critical question for hebrew israelites by vision on duty and dude you just as dumb as vocab malone you was reading a passage out of vocab malone's book barack obama and the hebrew israelites right completely stupid it's a stupid argument. It's a convoluted, wacky argument. Doesn't even really make sense. Now, this is uh, the elder brother Karatazar from GMS Vegas. He did a video entitled, How Can You Be Cursed If You Are Redeemed From The Curse Of The Law? They Ask. And the thing is this. Being cursed and being under the curses is two different things. Like I said, it doesn't have anything to do with each other. Now, how do we know this? Because even in the, in the, in the New Testament, when the Savior taught what did he say this is matthew 19 why would he bring up the commandments if you ain't under the law because that's the whole thing you're confused about what's really being said the curse of the law was what which was removed is the penalty of breaking the commandments because why the savior died on the cross you see this is matthew 19 verse 16 because if, if like we said the curse of the law that's dealing with the penalty of the law it's not dealing with the, the curses of deuteronomy just because you see the word cursed they, they, they get caught up on the word cursed it's just like when these stupid israelites play that game where they go and find the word mark in the scriptures and everywhere they try to find the word mark even if it's in a different language they relate it to the mark of the beast this is the same type of stuff see it says, curse be everyone who does not abide by all things written in the book of the law and do them. Why? Because of the penalty of the law. That's the only thing that's been removed, the penalty of it. The law in itself abides forever. Even from that point of view, that argument is stupid. 
It's a stupid argument. Has nothing to do with the curses, by the way. But let's read anyway. The Savior even said, it, it, yeah, right here in uh, Matthew 19 and verse 16, it says, And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? And he said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one. That is the most high. But if thou would enter into life, keep the commandments. It's right there. Verse 18, he saith unto him, which, Yahweh shall say, thou shalt do no murder, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness, honor thy father and thy mother, and thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. It's right there. The law is never going away. As a matter of fact, in Hebrews 8, the new covenant is going to put or when we get the new bodies under the new covenant, we're going to have the law in our inward parts, which that's really got nothing to do with the curses. Hebrews 8 and 7, for if that first covenant had been faultless, then should no place have been sought for the second. For finding fault with them, he said, Behold, the days come, said the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt, because they continue not in my covenant and I regarded them not, said the Lord. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, said the Lord. I will put my laws into their mind and write them in their hearts and I will be to them a God and they shall be to me a people. So the law is never going to be done away with. It's never going anywhere. So what was the Savior talking about? He wasn't talking about doing away with the law. It's the penalty of the law. You see that he covers let's go a little further with that this is revelation 14 and verse 12 listen to what it says here is the patience of the saints here are they that keep the commandments of the most high and the faith of Yahweh shah so yeah you got to have faith but you're also supposed to keep the commandments you think by saying that the curse of the law means the law is no longer in effect therefore it renders the curses not in effect that's stupid it's two different arguments anyway but you see the Savior telling Israelites to keep the commandments. What is sin? Transgression of the law. Now, when you read in the book of James, it says that the Israelites are scattered into every nation. How did that happen? Because of the curses. The scattering is a curse. The diaspora on the Israelites is a curse, proving that the curses are still in effect. And it also proves that what's written in Galatians is not talking about the curses being done away with. Because if that's the case, if the curses are done away with, pursuant to what's written in Galatians, then how in the hell are the Israelites scattered into all nations then? How do we commit sins without the law then? How is the Savior going to tell us to keep the commandments what he, when he taught? If the law was done away with, pursuant to Galatians, and on top of that, the Israelites were never uh, uh, under the curses. The captivity is a curse. The Romans ruling over the Israelites. That's a curse. Israelites being scattered. This is James 1 and 1. James is servant of the Most High and of the Lord, Yahweh Shai Hamashiach, to the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad. Can we read anywhere in the curses where it says the Israelites will be scattered? Sure we can. Let's go there. Deuteronomy. Did I even bring it up? Nope. I will bring it up though. Let's go to it right now. That's in the curses. This dude is trying so hard to try to find little little things that you think you can overturn the whole faith over a few scriptures. And it's not going to happen, man. Deuteronomy 28, 64. And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people from the one end of the earth, even unto the other. And there thou shalt serve other gods which neither thou nor thy fathers have known, even wood and stone. There's your scattering. James 1 and 1. Dog on it. I have to go back and read it. James 1 and 1. James, a servant of the Most High and of the Lord, Yahweh Shah Hamashiach, to the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad. Did the Savior ever teach that the Israelites would be scattered or that they would go into captivity? Yeah, he did. Luke 21. Verse 24, and they shall fall by the edge of the sword and shall be led away captive 
into all nations. The very fact that Paul had to go around to different nations teaching Israelites proved that they were scattered. When you read Acts 2 and 5 on down, that proves the Israelites were scattered into all nations. And that scattering goes back to the curses. How can Galatians remove the curses because of, uh, you know, dealing with the word cursed? The word cursed has nothing to do with the curses. There's two different things being spoken of. Otherwise, the Bible is contradicting itself. Luke 21, 24, they shall fall by the edge of the sword and shall be led away captive into all nations. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down to the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. And the Savior was the one that said that. That's two curses. Being scattered is a curse. Going into captivity is another curse. Deuteronomy 28, 64. And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people from the one end of the earth even unto the other. And there thou shalt serve other gods which neither thou nor thy fathers have known even wood and stone. There's your scattering. Where's your captivity? Deuteronomy 28, 48. Therefore thou shalt serve thine enemies which the Lord shall send against thee in hunger and in thirst and in nakedness and in want of all things. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. There you go. Proving yet again that What's written in Galatians 3 has nothing to do with the curses of Deuteronomy because even in the book of Luke and the book of James, the curses are still playing out on the Israelites. This dude is completely out of his mind. What else can we find? And I did have Deuteronomy 28 already opened up. What else can we find? When you read in the book of Daniel, it tells you that the Israelites did go under the curses and it followed them in every captivity. Why is it? Important by what's written in Daniel because that's during Babylon and then also during Medo Persia. Why did the Israelites go into those captivities? Because it was prophesied in the curses that we would go into captivity, even in the time of the Romans, the Savior and uh, the Israelites were under captivity in Rome. That itself is a curse, it's arguing against your own damn brain. Daniel 9 and 7 O Lord, righteousness belongeth unto thee. But unto us confusion of faces as it is this day to the men of Judah and to the inhabitants of Jerusalem and to all Israel that are near and that are far off through all the countries whither thou hast driven them because of their trespass that they have trespassed against thee. O Lord, to us belongs confusion of face to our kings, to our princes and to our fathers because we have sinned against thee. Let's jump to verse 11. Yeah, all Israel have transgressed thy law even by departing that they might not obey thy voice. Therefore, the curse is poured upon us and the oath that is written in the law of Moses, the servant of the Most High, because we have sinned against him. And he hath confirmed his words, which he spake against us and against our judges that judged us by bringing upon us a great evil. For under the whole heaven hath not been done as, been done, as hath been done upon Jerusalem. As it is written in the law of Moses, all this evil has come upon us, yet we made not our prayer before the Lord our power that we might turn from our iniquities and understand thy truth. Therefore hath, he, hath the Lord watched upon the evil and brought it upon us, for the Lord our God is righteous in all his works, which he doeth, for we obeyed not his voice. How long did the Lord say that the curses would last on us? If we went under the curses, and clearly we see in the book of Daniel is uh, clarifying and is verifying and is confirming that the, the curses were placed upon the Israelites. If you go to Deuteronomy 28, 15, it says, But it shall come to pass that thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy power to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. And when you go forward and go into the book of Luke, 21, 24 that we read, the Israelites were clearly scattered and taken captive into all nations, all the way in the New Testament. So what is vocab talking about? What was Galatians going to? Because even after that, when the book of James, the book of James tells you what? That the Israelites are scattered into all nations. In Revelation, it told us what? That we had to keep the commandments and the faith of Yahweh Shai. Why we got to keep the commandments they done away with? Hebrews 8. Tells us in the new covenant we're going to have the law put into our inward parts. Why? If the law was done away with, pursuing the Galatians, it was not what it meant. The Savior down on the cross removed that penalty of the law from us. 
That's all it's going into. You people are so giddy and stupid and you have no understanding of what you're even talking about. You just took the word curses and cursed and tried to mesh them together, and make it mean the same thing. You didn't you didn't know that the, that the Edomites were cursed. How about that? Let's go to that real quick. You didn't know that the Edomites were a cursed nation. You were to talk about Esau could be under the under the laws or that uh, Esau can be saved. Yet, according to your own admission, due to the word cursed, you said, how can you be saved if you under the curses or if you're cursed? Isaiah 34. And I'm going to go right to the point. Verse five. For my sword shall be bathed in heaven. Behold, it shall come down upon Idumia and upon the people of my curse to judgment. See? And that's and, and Esau is not under the curses of Deuteronomy, but he is cursed. And that's a way, and that's still different than the curse that's spoken of in Galatians. Just because you see the word curse doesn't mean the same thing. The curses in Deuteronomy has nothing to do with Galatians chapter 3. Esau's curse to judgment has nothing to do with Galatians chapter 3. And you still can't be saved. It's just wordplay. This is what Vocab Malone is doing. And that curse of judgment that's on the Edomites, you can't remove it, by the way. By your own stupid logic. You saying that the Edomites can be saved through Christ. So supposedly that's the word you use. But then it just said that Esau was cursed to judgment. So now you're going to tell me that Galatians removed that curse too? Doesn't make any sense because it's not even the same damn thing. You tripping. See? Let's also go to Baruch. Because if we read in the book of Daniel that the Israelites were, the curses were confirmed. Verse 12 right here, Daniel 9 and 12. And he hath confirmed his words, which he spake against us and against our judges that judged us by bringing upon us a great evil. For under the whole heaven had not been done as had been done upon Jerusalem. As it is written in the law of Moses, all this evil has come upon us. Yet may we not our prayer before the Lord our power that we might turn from our iniquities and understand thy truth. You see that? And it went from there into the further captivities. In the book of Baruch, Baruch 1 verse 19. Since the day that the Lord brought our forefathers out of the land of Egypt until this present day, we have been disobedient unto the Lord our power, and we have been negligent in not hearing his voice. Wherefore the evils cleaved unto us and the curse which is the curses which the lord appointed by moses his servant at the time that he brought our fathers out of the land of egypt to give us a land that flowed with milk and honey like as it is to see this day nevertheless we have not hearkened unto the voice of the lord our power according to all the words of the prophets whom he sent unto us but every man followed the imagination of his own wicked heart to serve strange gods and to do evil in the sight of the Lord our power. That's in Baruch chapter 1. Going forward in Baruch chapter 2. Therefore the Lord have made good his word. He confirmed it like in the book of Daniel. Which he pronounced against us and against our judges that judged Israel. <clears throat> and against our kings and against our princes. And against the men of Israel and Judah. To bring upon us great plagues. What are these great plagues called? The curses. Such as never happened under the whole heaven as it came to pass in jerusalem according to the things that were written in the law of moses in the curses that a man should eat the flesh of his own son and the flesh of his own daughter that even happened in 70 a.d roundabout men were eating the flesh of their own sons and daughters in the siege of jerusalem and that's during the safe that's after the savior's time we're showing you that the curses were still playing out even in 70 a.d moreover he had delivered them to be in subjection under the rule of to all the kingdoms that are round about us. James 1 and 1, the scattering to be a reproach and a desolation among all the people round about where the Lord hath scattered them. It's easy. And the scattering is a curse. If we go to Revelation 22, you still see the Israelites under the curses until the Savior comes. Revelation 22 and 1. And he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of the Most High and of the Lamb in the midst of the street of it. And on either side of the river was there the tree of life, 
which bare twelve manner of fruits and yielded her fruit every month, and the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. Listen, and there shall be no more curse, but the throne of the Most High and of the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall serve him. And they shall see his face, and his name shall be in their foreheads. So the curses, which is also called a curse, but it doesn't mean we're, we're cursed. We're under the curses, but we're not cursed. Ham or Canaan was cursed. Esau was cursed to judgment, but the Israelites are under the curses. And there should be no more curse. The Savior is going to remove the curses from the Israelites, showing you that we're still under the curses. And Vocab Malone just doesn't understand that. And it's all over the Bible. Right? And it shows further that the law was not done. Because this is another clever way of these devils trying to say that the law was done away with. No, not the law. But the penalty of it was removed by the Savior's blood shed on the cross. And you just don't understand that vocab. You're so busy trying to find something. And all you did was just confounded yourself even further, man. It's all over the Bible. The curses of being scattered. Right? Not being in the homeland. Even sin still in the earth. And that's the, the breaking of the commandments. You and this dude right here with the bald head, y'all lost. Completely lost. You don't understand the Bible. That's it, brothers. I want to do a quick response. These, these people have no idea what the hell they're talking about. We'll see you again soon with another lesson, Lord willing. All praise to Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai. Shalom.